Welcome back, my friends, as we get into assessing the diversification within your investment portfolio. So over the next several minutes, we're going to walk through a step-by-step -step process to help you make sure that your stocks and funds are well diversified. Now, whether or not you're a beginner or a seasoned investor, I'm hopeful that this guide is going to help you to make better and more informed investment decisions. <clears throat> now, diversification, it is more than just a big buzzword. It is a fundamental investment strategy that will help you to reduce your risk by spreading your investments over different asset classes, industries, as well as geographical regions. <clears throat> but how do you know if you're diversified enough? Well, let's break it down. Step one, understanding your current portfolio. First of all, I want you to take a really good close look at your current holdings. What's in your portfolio? Make a big list of all of your funds, your stocks, mutual funds, ETFs and any other investments that you have. Now this initial assessment is crucial to understand where you're starting from. It establishes a good baseline. Number two, analysing asset allocation. So next, look at asset allocation. So that means how much of your investment portfolio is divided among different assets like stocks, bonds, and cash. So a common rule of thumb is to have a mix that's going to reflect your overall risk tolerance and investment horizon. Now, for instance, younger investors, they might have a higher percentage in stocks for overall growth, while older investors might prefer bonds for stability. Step three, sector and industry breakdown. Now, we're going to dive deeper into the stocks and funds. Which sectors and industries are they invested in? Now you might have some tech stocks, healthcare, financials, consumer goods, but are you heavily invested in a single sector? Now if a significant portion of your portfolio is tied into a single sector, consider diversifying into other areas in order to spread some risk. Or geographic diversification. So investing globally can actually offer substantial diversification benefits. So assess the geographic exposure of your investments. Are they mostly US based or do you have more international exposure? Now global diversification can protect you from regional specific economic downturns and it can also offer growth opportunities through emerging markets. Five, size and style diversification. So I want you now to look at the market capitalization of the companies in your portfolio. Are you primarily invested in large, mid or small cap stocks? Now each of these has different risk and return profiles. Now similarly, consider your style of exposure, growth or value. So a mix of both can actually offer a much more balanced approach. Six, mutual funds and ETFs. Now mutual funds and ETFs can be great tools for diversification, but it's also really important to understand your underlying holdings. Now some funds might be concentrated in a specific sector or region. So ensure that these investments align with your diversification goals. Seven, correlation amongst your investments. So assess the correlation between your investments. Now correlation simply measures how often and how much these investments move in relation to each other. Now ideally you would like investments that don't move in the same direction all at the same time and this would help to smooth out your portfolio volatility. Step eight, regularly review and rebalance. Now diversification, it is not a set and forget it strategy my friends. You must review and rebalance your portfolio from time to time and the reason for this is simple. Market movements will shift your overall asset allocation with time and rebalancing is going to help you to maintain the desired level of diversification. And number nine, consider alternative investments. So don't Overlook alternative investments like real estate, commodities, private equity, because these can all provide strong diversification benefits that are not correlated with traditional stock and bond markets. And finally, step 10, continuous learning. Keep yourself educated, because the world of investing is always evolving, so stay informed about market trends, new investment products and economic factors that could help impact your portfolio. So my friends, overall, when it comes to assessing and maintaining the diversification within your portfolio, this is going to be an ongoing process for all of us. It requires a careful and informed approach. By following these steps, however, you can enhance your portfolio's resilience and you can position yourself for long-term success. Hey, thank you so much for joining with me today. Now, if you found this guide helpful, please do hit the like and subscribe for more investment insights. So until next time, keep diversifying and stay safe with your investing.